fighters. They are the ones that keep running over there. You can make choices. You don't have to go to top rank. Fuck ESPN. <laughs> fuck them. This sounds fucked up, right? But that sounded good. But they kept <laughs> they kept enticing the motherfuckers back in the day to come to that boat, didn't they? Yeah. Huh? They kept yeah, yeah that's true. Coming to that boat, and they kept getting on that boat, even though niggas was getting shackled, chained, whipped, and slain. You know what I'm saying they kept going. Yeah. It's the same modern day slavery with Bob Aaron, bro. It ain't nothing, nothing changed. He's stuck on the old school. Remember, yo, remember it was the guy on top rank that said, keep I mean, your fighters away from them black fighters. They, they different. They naturally athletic. You go to any, what do you say, go to any street corner. Go to, go to, go to any corner and ask a white boy to, to uh, throw a jab. And then go to any street corner and ask a brother to throw a jab. They naturally uh -huh. talented and gifted. He's been spitting that racist shit from the jump. He's been trying to keep his fighters away from black fighters. Their whole, whole career, so he signs the black fighters just so his fighters won't be threatened by him. Because he ain't never got a right. put him in the ring with Lomachenko ain't fought one black guy, I don't think, besides what, uh, what's, the, what's the kid from D.C.? Uh, what's the kid yeah, from yeah, D.C.? Um, Gary Russell. Yeah, Russell, Russell, Russell. And then he fought hand. He been fighting foreigners and shit like that the whole time. You feel me? Like, like you know, it's, it's it's funny how they try to save him though. And I'm talking about trying to save Loma because what was it? Uh, Lenars yes, that yes, for him? Yes, they took his. They took his loss. They That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, I've always looked at how top rank ESPN they do shit that pisses me off with the whole pound for pound thing. And, and they disrespect the shit out of, in my opinion, Tank. And I'm a little biased to Tank, but they disrespect him with some things he say. And I'm like, come on, bro. Like, that's bullshit that Loma lost. How many fights he done lost now? Three? Yeah, three or four. He got three losses. So he got the loss against Lopez. He got this loss against Haney. And he got the, the loss that he had uh, when he went for the title. I think it was against Gary Russell. So I'm like, all right, you got three losses. But they keep saying you, you top three pound for pound. How? How? And that's that ESPN top rank shit. Yeah, and it, it is based. That's, it was based off his amateur record. And that, that, listen to the, listen to what you just said. I that, hey bro. It, I know. Yeah, it, that, I got that's the criteria for pound for pound. My, my so what is your what is your criteria for pound for pound? To me, you cannot fight in one weight class and be pound for pound. That's a, I like that. That's, that's a that's a whole that's a whole like that's that's hypocritical. Pound for pound, pound mm -hmm. for pound. So you let's say you cannot. Do, it. Let's 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 do this because it's something that we've never done. Let's hear the Taz TV four one zero pound for pound fighters right now in the game today. Um. Can do that. Fact, I'm gonna give you some time. Give you some time unless you're ready off the cup. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. Um, I'm gonna say that the number one spot is a little iffy. I don't like the fact that everybody has Crawford number one. Um, I granted he was undisputed at 140, and he came up the he came up and took the WBO belt at 47. But like realistically speaking, he really hasn't done anything at 47 to uh -huh. be like the number one pound-for-pound pound guy in the world. Uh, like, to me, like it or not, like, Nello's still, like, one to me either only because, and it's not, it ain't the fandom or nothing like that, but the kid then really went from 154 up to 175. Um, he's won at every weight class he's been at. He held title in every weight class that he's been in. Um, granted, he lost at 175, but shit. Sugar Ray Robinson went up to 175 and lost that title trying to get that fight. You see what I'm saying? No comparison. But yeah, bro, like I still got I still got Canelo number one. I'm sorry. Because even even if that even with the Bibble loss, he went for greatness. Like I'm a not. Mm -hmm. The all the stuff y'all say he do, like I'm a not. The accomplishments. Hold on. The accomplishments. But, but before we go too deep in the rankings, because we're gonna go there, how can we say that Canelo is ducking anybody when he's the champ? That man went um, and literally fought. Hold up, that man really went and fought 
the monster that everybody was ducking uh -huh. in Triple G. Uh -huh. He fought him. And they fought three, three times. Three times. Uh -huh. So, and to me, and I, I'm all, you know, I always keep it 100. Uh -huh. I think Canelo lost the first one. They gave him a draw. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. Gave him a draw. The second one was a modern day classic because in that fight, in my opinion, Canelo had, to go, had established himself early. Mm -hmm. Triple G showed his part the second half of the fight, and then the third part of the fight, Canelo showed why he was the man. Mm -hmm. Canelo was the number is the number one, and then the third fight, mm -hmm. Canelo was obviously better. You know, a little younger, the fighter, so he was, mm -hmm. he was a little bit better. So I had to give it to him. But even with that fight, that was a very good fight. Okay. They had three fights, a, a legit trilogy that people could enjoy. Okay. So I'm agreeing with you. I think that the number one pound for pound fighter in the game is Canelo Alvarez. So hands down, it's Canelo Alvarez. Now I want to hear who number two is on your hands. Before side. I give you two, I'm gonna ask you a question about the whole duck with Canelo. Um, first off, Canelo didn't duck Charlo at all. At all. They offered for Charlo seven million. Charlo turned it down. Yep, because he uh, he's the one uh, doing the duck. No. Charlo was going through mental shit. So I thought he was too. Nah, bro. I always call it. I always nah, say, nah, now I can't I can't really shit on mental health because I ain't gonna do that. He going through real he, uh, he going know. through real shit, bro. Yeah. And I, and I, and I wish I, I wish I, I wish I still had the article that I could share mm -hmm. with y'all. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the homework to find it. But I ain't gonna beat up on Charlo too much. Um I I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone about Charlo. I'm gonna leave, leave it alone, alone about Charlo until I got until I find an article. Um, Uber wasn't nobody to fight. Let's keep it a buck. Came for nobody. Now, now, right now, okay. He's not gonna be there. Yes, he did. He's stuck Benavidez the first time because he was supposed to fight Benavidez and he waited for Benavidez to lose his belt on the scale to come up to fight Yildum, get that WBC belt. And then go on his tear at 68. He go to fight Bibble, lose the Bibble. Benavidez just destroys plant. Bibble, because because of the Garcia and Tank fight, PBC got the bag. 50 million. Uh -huh. million. 50 million to fight Benavidez. Right? Canelo, like, I want Bibble. But the, the problem, the, what makes it a duck is the fact that when he say he wanted Bibble, he wanted Bibble at the same time. I right. won't get to Bibble at the same terms when you lost. Bibble said he'll come down and wait and fight you in 68 for your shit. So that's what, that's what makes it a duck. You see what I'm saying? And because the money been put on the table, and he's still calling for up top. Now, number two. Uh, now, right, I'm going number off of what you just said. Your, one of your criteria was so number you got to be able to bounce from one weight tag to another weight class. Right. I got you. So number two, bro, I gave this kid a lot of disrespect. You know what I'm saying, but that boy in the new way, bro, like, I ain't gonna hold you. Like, it ain't that he jumped weight classes. He jumps two weight classes every time he fights. Now, who is this? A new way. Okay. Yeah, I like it. He jumps two weight classes every time he fights for a championship, and the guy that he's about to fight next, I think it's Fulton, he's supposed to be, he's staying at the weight to yep. wait for your to and, he, and, and he, he coming, he coming up to him. Yeah, he. And I got him winning that fight. Who, which one? Fulton. A new way. Oh yeah, new way. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, I definitely got a new way, a new way too. Um, yeah, a new way all day. Oh, uh, number three. I'm in the air between putting Tank and Crawford at three. Uh, all right, so. Um, why Watch this. I'm going to be real, real nice, and I ain't going to be biased. I'm going to say Bud, and you know why? Because I watched Bud dominate at 140. Right. And he nobody was undisputed. And he was undisputed, and nobody expected that man to do that. Because when we first seen him, he was a throw-in because another champion had got hurt. And he just, and came, he up showed, from and he just came up from 35. And, and that's, that's why I'm putting him there. I'm putting Bud there because not only did he come from 135, he was a, basically a, just a throwaway, just trying to go ahead and get a fight going. People say the card. He took advantage of his opportunity. He, he won the undisputed back. title, and he ain't never looked back. And if he beats Earl Spence and becomes the undisputed 147 champion. Two times. Two times. Kind of sound like the other person that I got at number four. So that, that'll that be really, really interesting right, right there. So yeah. I got Bud. I'll I take... Um if you're going to put Bud there, I I had to put Tank at four. Uh, 
second. All right, and I'll put in tank next. Um, and the reason so I you put Lopez? Tim Fimo? Yeah. For sure. For sure. I'm just going sure. off of hope. Oh, I'm only going off of what we just finished talking about, though. I know that. You're saying, saying, I, I got you. I got you. I got you. Tank got a tank. Mm -hmm. Them went from 30 to 35, went back to 30, jumped to 40, came back to 35. Mm -hmm. Clean house. Mm -hmm. Close. Clean okay. house. Yeah, but I'm looking. Hey, the man, the man won the undisputed belt at 135, and, and he, he just also, beat the lineal. And he also got washed by a mop. You calling Cambosis a mop now? You just said Cambosis was good, and the man was about to die. No, 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 no. no. I said Cambosis was going to beat Tio because Tio. Right, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Because Tio should have been fighting at 35. After he won that last fight, he said on stage he had a problem making that weight, and he should have never came. He should have went up to forty. He should have never fought Cambosis. He should have never okay. fought at thirty five again. Okay. He should have never fought at thirty five again. Now that now we going back into the issue of why he was still right there fighting at one thirty five because it was about the what trying Ego. to get the bag. Ego. And, yeah, trying to get the bag. No, nah, that's what that's it was about. Fault. That's his fault. Mm. And he got Mike. Yo, Ken Bosa was a nobody before then. Ken Bosa ain't fight out of Australia before then. You see what I'm Agreed. saying? You see what I'm saying? He was just active enough to beat T.O. when he was sluggish. Mm -hmm. he, you know, he was a mop, bro. He was a mop. But bro. I've never liked huh? Right. You had to put on some other shoes or something real quick. Yeah, yeah, so I definitely put in tank over Tio. And I don't even have Tio that high. I got tank four. If I wanna go five, I'm starting to look at that. Um woo, five bro. Damn. I'm almost stuck. So, so you got tank there. at four. I do. You got tank at four. I do. So what about Devin yeah. Haney? Because I think we, we, we're, agreeing on, we're agreeing on Canelo, number one. Mm -hmm. At number two, we definitely saying that Anuwe is at number two. At number mm -hmm. three, we said Bud, right? Uh-huh. Bud is at three. Thank I said Lord. Lopez because... And I'm giving you six, I said, six, I'm giving you six five. Okay. Okay. And well, I, I got... I got, that, I got... Go ahead, go ahead. I know I don't like heavyweights on the pound-for-pound pound list. Me neither. at the top of the mountain. Me but neither. That they are heavyweights. But he was undisputed cruiserweight champion. Came up. You talking about Usyk? Yeah. He was undisputed at, at cruiserweight. But Anthony, Think, but Anthony Josh, but Ashley Joshua is a bitch though. It, yo, he is. Yo, he is the unified champion. He holds three belts at heavyweight. I get it. But Anthony Joshua is a sucker. We know. So, that. all right, all right. Listen, it's all right. It, the heavyweight thing is uh, is so crazy because, in my opinion, Wilder is the second best heavyweight right now behind Fury. But Fury is like here, and then Wilder is like right there, and then everybody else is like a little tier under. And it's like to me, like, damn, we watch Wilder in three fights against Fury get dominated in three fights, but that man knocked yo out, well, knocked him down several times. It was a very good, another good trilogy, but you could just tell who was the better boxer, fighter, was Fury than, than Wilder to me. You know what for I'm saying? Sure, like, that's for sure. that's just my whole thing. Yeah. The heavyweight, the heavyweight thing is always weird to me. I've always 